Hi everyone. Do I look like a newsreader sitting like this? Nice and stern with my hands together on the table. <laughs> G'day folks. There's been a lot of talk about floodwaters because guess what, the river's flooded and it is a great thing. Somebody suggested to me yesterday, a number of people actually have been asking me about it. Why is this flood water so good? Why am I excited? What benefits is it gonna to be to fishing? Stay tuned, because I'm gonna tell you. Righto folks, floods are always a good thing for fishing, particularly when the weather's cold. Summer floods aren't great because warmer water has less oxygen and we end up with black water events. But this time of year, a flood, what we've got now, not a flash flood, a sustained flood that was caused by three or four consecutive days of steady and heavy rain is the best thing for the fishing. Now, it's the start of May. It's the wrong time of year for Murray cod to spawn. So the Murray cod are not gonna benefit directly from this particular flood, but I'll get back to that shortly. Yellow belly are an opportunistic spawner. They'll spawn when conditions are right. And for the conditions to be right, the water needs to be around about 20 to 22 degrees. At the moment, it's not a good opportunity for them to spawn because the water's bloody freezing and there's half a metre of snow on the mountain still feeding it. So the yellow belly aren't gonna spawn. So what benefit have we got? Well, on the lower your ovens river, there is thousands or hundreds or thousands of lagoons and swamps and many of them have been dry for a number of time for a number of uh, for a number of years last summer you may remember i had just video after video after video of me catching turtles i couldn't catch a fish and i suspected that maybe the turtles had come out of the lagoons and into the river because the lagoons dried up but hopefully now they can go home back to the lagoons and i can stop catching turtles when i go fishing so we've got turtles moving back into the lagoons We've also got a lot of bird life coming back. In the lagoons, there's gonna be a lot of insect life. There's gonna be just a lot of movement. Those, those insects are gonna breed under the water and then hatch and grow wings and fly away and the birds are gonna come and get them. But a lot of these things, such as mud eyes and dragonflies, they're gonna move into the river and they're gonna become food for the fish. So basically the entire ecosystem has just been given a massive shot in the arm. As soon as, there's an old saying, water brings life. As soon as the water comes back, so too does the stuff that lives in the water. So there's gonna be a lot more food around for the fish. Now, let's talk about other ways how this, how this flood has going to, uh, is gonna benefit the fishing. It's gonna clean the rivers. The river was looking terrible late in summer. It was low, it was low in oxygen. There wasn't much flow. There was scum buildup. There was scum buildup where the grime and stuff on the river hits the log and then builds up. And I was getting to the point that there was grass growing out of that scum buildup because it was like a layer of dirt on the water. This flood is just gonna clean all of that out as well as probably 2000 Evian water bottles that are gonna end up in Lake Mawala, which is really sad and hopefully they get collected. <laughs> Uh, so it's going to give the river a really good flush, a really good clean out. It's going to create new washed out banks. It's going to just work wonders for the native fish in the long run. At the moment, it's going to be great up in the hills for the trout because this rain will be washing excessive amounts of worms into the water and the trout will be gouging out on worms like no tomorrow, putting on condition, condition and getting fat so that when they finish spawning, they can rest up and, uh, and return back to where they come from and build up their energy again. So they'll be feeding like mad and putting on condition. Then there's the other added value. The extra water is extra, extra creeks. Seasonal creeks are now gonna be spawning creeks for trout. It's easier for the trout to migrate upstream and they've got more places they can migrate into to spawn. So at the moment, this flood is gonna be just what the doctor ordered. Hopefully, we get a really, really good trout spawning season this year. And hopefully, the fact that the river's high pushes some eggs downstream further than normal because what happens the trout swim upstream to spawn then one of them swims back down one stays there protects the eggs they hatch they float away then the other trout comes back now where they end up is determined by how much water is in in the system at the given time the plan from the fish's perspective is for the eggs to end up back where they are but if they've got a lot more water they might push downstream and we might start seeing some trout in downstream sections we might not either. This is just something that I'm uh, hypothesizing, but I hope we do. So there's some immediate benefits for the trout. Now the cod need, cod spawn every year in the springtime regardless of conditions, but it's the outcome of that spawn that is determined by the conditions. In other words, if the river's low and, and clear when the cod spawn in springtime, what'll happen, the cod, the eggs will hatch, the cod will feed off their yolk sacs, 
And then once that yolk sac's empty, it's time to start feeding on plankton and stuff. And that plankton is found in floodwaters. If the floodwaters aren't there, those fry die and we get a really low strike rate. So hopefully, with the catchment now being saturated, hopefully it stays saturated all winter, which I think it probably should. And then in spring, if we get a flood, when the daylight hours are getting longer and the water's getting warmer, when those cod spawn and the eggs hatch, hopefully it'll all time perfectly and there'll be a lot more plankton and stuff in the water for the fry to eat before they get big enough to start feeding on little minnows and shrimps and stuff. So, as from a cod spawning perspective, it's great that the catchment's already saturated. The last couple of years, it hasn't been saturated properly all winter, and now it is. So hopefully we can get a run a run off this spring that will lead to some good Murray cod spawning. Then, so we've got potentially improved conditions for a cod. We've got fantastic conditions right now for trout, but then there's the lakes. Lake Hume and Lake Yildon have just gone up 1%. That's not very much, I know that. But once again, the, strength, the, the catchments are saturated. There's a bit of snow on the mountains. Any little shower or rain that falls on that catchment is going to wash in. Hopefully we can get some flows into these lakes. Lake Dartmouth and Lake Hume, I can't remember the exact numbers, but they've both just gone up about a percent and a half each. Lake Nilakuti has gone up 20%. It's on 43%. So it's gone up over 20% in the last few days. That's the highest it's been at the moment since February 2019. It's higher than it was at any time last winter already. And on top of that, we've got that saturated catchment, which means that any rain that falls in there is only going to top it up. So we're going to see water levels in, in storages rise this winter. Now, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know how much rain we're going to get in the winter. But what I do know is that this flooding we've got now and the rain we've had has saturated the catchments. And that's the whole thing. The catchments are saturated. So any rain we get now is going to have an impact on those storages. Lake Nilakuti is still rising sharply. Without uh, any follow-up rain, no doubt that rise, that rate of rise will taper right off. But it is still, for now, rising sharply. So we're in a better position than it was last year. Lake William Hobble is full. Lake Buffalo is full. Lake Buffalo is a strange lake. It's actually full at 60%. It's what I think I read somewhere once that it's called a three-phase lake. So you've got the outlet at the bottom, the little tube that lets the water out into the river. Then you've got the overflow when it's full. But that's 60%. That's the two phases. The third phase is the floodgates come down and they hold the water back from 60% up to 100%. So it's, uh, it'll be at 60% now all of winter and into spring until the, the uh, inflows hit that trigger point, I'm not sure what that is, but they'll lower the floodgates and they'll start holding water back for irrigation. So essentially Lake Buffalo is full as well. So many good things. Whenever we get a wet year, we always seem to get good fishing for the next few years after it, folks. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we get a great trout season next year and we get some good native fish recruitment in the springtime.